because I feel like a cliche millennial right now. Hello everybody. So this is day three of the Natalie Goldberg riding challenge. Today is Wednesday. It's very sunny outside. And so I decided to come down to the park to try one of Natalie's very practical activities where she's asking you to write a bunch of prompts down that you can return to whenever you're doing your writing practice. So again, as I've mentioned previously, Natalie Goldberg's work is for largely for memoir and life writing. So a lot of her students are usually trying to develop a writing practice and in writing every day or having a regular writing practice, the aim is that you would then be better when you're working on your main piece of work, your main project. So whether that's a memoir, a piece of nonfiction writing, or in my case, fiction. So I'm going to sort of adapt this particular activity for my fantasy novel I'm trying to write right now. So she says, making a list is good. It makes you start noticing material for writing in your daily life. And your writing comes out of your relationship with your life and its texture. So I really like that idea that it's forcing you to notice things. So I'm gonna try and write a bunch of prompts related to my fiction novel. So I sort of have a general idea of the plot. I haven't gotten too down into the weeds with it. So I think I'm gonna try and write some prompts inspired by what I know about the book so far, what I have already written and maybe going on tangents off of that, but then also what I know is to come. So particular scenes that I know that are to come or even particular images that I have and maybe writing down these prompts so that on days when I approach the blank page and I can't think of anything to write, I can pull out one of these prompts and then respond to that for five or 10 minutes or for an entire writing session. Can I just say too, that it is really weird being in public and talking on your phone. And I keep looking around to see if anybody is around and looking at me because I feel like a, like cliche millennial right now. Like I really don't understand how other YouTubers do this, especially vloggers, like people who vlog about their life. I don't know how you do it, man. So I was going to record this reflection at the park as soon as I had finished that writing exercise, but all these people had shown up. So I felt kind of awkward about doing this whole summary and talking to camera bit. But that was a really interesting activity. So I ended up coming up with 28 prompts. The first three or four were actually more questions about the novel. So what does my protagonist really want? Does what my protagonist want change? At the beginning of the novel compared to the end of the book those kinds of like internal crafty questions but then after that it got more into the kinds of prompts that you would write um, that you could respond to in a writing activity so like write a scene where this thing happens now to give a little bit of context for this one prompt that i came up with that i really want to share is um before my novel takes place there's this incident that happens and it changes two characters' lives. And then the book picks up 16 years later. Now, both of these characters are in the narrative, this future narrative, 16 years later, but it's only told through one character's perspective. And I decided, wouldn't it be interesting to see that moment from the other character's perspective? So one, I wrote down a prompt to actually write the scene when this moment happens, because so far it's only been referred to retroactively. And the second one was to then write that scene when this moment happens from the other character's perspective. So I think that this would be a really interesting 
activity to do. I don't know if either will wind up in the book, but I think it's one of those things where it's important information for me to know. Sorry, my dog is playing footsies with me right now and it's super adorable. Um, yeah, so I came up with those 28 prompts. The first three were sort of, like I said, those more questions about the novel and then the rest were actual proper prompts. But it was probably once I got to the 22nd prompt that I started to snag and I started to struggle to come up with stuff. And then I pushed a little bit further and I got those extra prompts in there. And these are absolutely ones that I'm 100% going to use, especially during this stage right now where I'm doing a zero draft and it's really open and exploratory. I'm totally happy to write scenes that are just for my own understanding about the characters or the plot or experimenting with the plot. Not everything has to wind up in the novel at this point. So I'm really excited that for the next, what, 28 days, I've got these ready to go prompts to actually respond to. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna try responding to one right now. Okay, it's the same day, but I've just, well, I changed my t-shirt because I got hot, but it's the same day and I just tried writing to one of the prompts that I wrote. And I probably wrote, well, I wrote to 500 words and a lot of it was sort of like setting up the scene. And this was the activity where I was writing from the other character's perspective. But it was interesting in in regards to the minor world building that even happened in that 500 words. And I got a little bit more of a glimpse into the earlier relationship that these people had together 16 years ago. So it was quite interesting. It was interesting seeing um, how this character's perception of the other character was different 16 years ago. I know this is all very cryptic for obvious reasons, but the whole point of this to say to extrapolate this so that it's, you know, usable and relatable to you. The important thing to take away here is that I discovered new information about my character and their shared history with this other person, which I wouldn't have discovered if I didn't write this particular scene. Now this scene isn't finished, but I'm very intrigued and I'm going to continue writing it tomorrow. So in my book, I would say that this is super successful. And like I mentioned before, I may not use this in the final draft, but the thing is, I need to know this information about my characters because that information, I'm gonna take these off because of the glare, but that information is going to inform the types of decisions that that character makes. It, it informs the characterization of the character. So even though the scene doesn't show up, it's going to change my, it has changed my understanding of the character and therefore how I'm gonna write them. Though of course, to be honest, the best writing happens when it feels like the story is just writing itself. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it does. And I think that's the moment, the feeling that we're all chasing as writers. So that's all I've got for you today. This is day three of the Natalie Goldberg writing challenge. And if you really liked this video, then I recommend checking out days one and two if you haven't already. And if you want even more writing advice, of course, check out the other videos on this channel. There's 115 of them. Or you can head to tireeast.com and dive into the archives. While you're there, consider joining my email newsletter, because when you do, I'll send you a free gift as a thank you. And every week you'll receive an email in your inbox that includes a note by me, a quote of the week, some often writing related resources that I've recently loved and think you will too, as well as some other tidbits that I only share via email. I really hope you're enjoying this challenge and that it's inspiring you to get some writing done because the world actually does need more books.